Now, what's interesting is the first question I always ask anyone who comes to me, they can tell me why they're unhappy, but I always ask, how do you define happiness? Hey, my name is Veronica Cisneros, and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, a mama of three girls, and married for 23 years. I am obsessed with helping you navigate through the seasons of marriage, helping couples like you break free from feeling like roommates. I will teach you the secrets to having a healthy marriage by providing tools and tips to help you reconnect in a way that you can't keep your hands off each other, where flirting and kissing is the norm in your household. Setting intentional time to date, get to know and support each other's dreams and goals so that you can grow together without keeping score or judging one another. Where you feel seen and heard even when you disagree. Where arguments end with mutual respect and understanding. Where you work together to build and strengthen your family so no one feels like they're carrying the weight of the family on their own. These are the necessary skills your children need for you to model so that they develop healthy relationships and thrive in life. This is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. Welcome to the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. I am your host, Veronica Cisneros. Today's guest is known as a midlife maverick. She's a testament to resilience, having triumphed over grief and obstacles, including the death of her baby to SIDS, financial devastation after divorce, and managing the role of her caregiver for her son with intellectual disabilities and her husband with primary progressive MS. Her journey includes successfully starting and selling a business at 28, conquering the New York City Marathon at 57, proving it's never too late for transformation. As a serial entrepreneur, successful coach, and speaker, she empowers women in midlife to rediscover their goals, rebuild confidence, amplify joy, and unlock the abundance they deserve. So please help me by welcoming my guest, Allison Jacobson. Hey, Allison. Hey, Veronica. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm so excited. I am so, so excited. So if you, if you don't mind, can you please tell us your story? And when I say your story, like, tell me when you literally fell on your ass and you're like, well, shit, what am I going to do now? Yeah. So I, you know, there's, there's been a couple of times, right? but I think, uh, <laughs> I, I think the one that was most powerful, mo- some people would think it was when my first son died of sudden infant death syndrome. And that was yeah. absolutely devastating. But what really knocked me on my ass was my divorce because yeah. classic where I was earning high six figures. I was raising my kids. I was working in New York City. I was doing it all. And unfortunately, I didn't realize my husband was running up so much debt trying to build his own business. And he didn't have the capabilities of doing it. And so when we ended up getting divorced, unfortunately, while the judge said half the debt is his, the credit card companies don't care. That debt was my name. And so yeah. on top of that, right at the same time, I lost one of my major clients. Oh and my so God. my life was in such chaos between the legal fees, the credit card bills, everything. And I was forced to declare bankruptcy. Wow. That is not how I was brought up. I was brought up to be financially independent, to be responsible mm-hmm. for my debts. And Veronica, that was the most humiliating, low yeah point in my life. I, I remember coming out of bankruptcy court, driving home, sitting at a rest stop and just bawling my eyes out. Yeah. It was horrible, but I'll tell you, looking back now, it was truly the best thing that could happen to me because look, you know what? It doesn't just, it's not just one person that makes it happen. I was responsible too. shame on me. I took my eye off the ball. I allowed it to happen. So it was my fault too, right? 
the problem was when I was in such debt, I was afraid. I was literally afraid to open up my computer and look at my bank account. Like I would go to the grocery store and just pray to God, my Please debit Lord, card. Make it happen. Right. Make it happen. Right. Yeah. And so I I've realized that I had no choice. I had to put my big girl pants on and start looking at what I had because there were no more credit cards, right? I yeah. had to find the money. And so it is amazing once you are at that point, what you can do. Mm-hmm. And from that point on is when I said, A, I'm never going to let myself get to this point again, but B, I really wanted to help women get past these situations and understand they can survive because we are so beaten down sometimes. We have so much limiting beliefs and self-doubt that we can achieve the goals we want and we can dig ourselves out of these problems. And so that's when I decided I am never going to allow that to happen to me again. Bingo. Yes. So let's go ahead and rewind back. You mentioned the divorce. You mentioned your husband at the time um, racked up so much debt. Um, and, you know, your main focus was not at all on, let me go ahead and check the bank account. It was laser focused elsewhere. And, you know, it, I, I totally felt like when you go to the grocery, you know, what you said, the example you gave, when you go to the grocery store and you're like, please, dear Lord, just make this happen. Cause I don't want to put these groceries back again. Yeah. Um, right. 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 So you mentioned your part in the marriage or the device of the marriage. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Because I feel like as high achievers, we just go like, it's like somebody like the gun got, you know, got, um, got, um, oh my, it got shot yeah. up in the air and we're like, boom, we're like ready to go right. as I like fling my <laughs> earphones everywhere. But yeah, like we're literally ready to go and we're not stopping. We're not stopping for water. We're not stopping to pee. We're getting to that finish line. Even if that finish line keeps on moving over and over, like we're doing it no matter what. So what would you say are some of the issues you brought into the marriage? Well, I think, you know, as high achieving women, we have Mm -hmm. our goals and we have our lists. And even like you said, I built my first business when I was 24 years old. I sold it when I was 28. I was living in LA, but I knew I was going to move back to the East coast. And so I had all of these to do items and I was checking off the boxes and my ex-husband fit into those checking box items because he was willing to relocate to the East Coast. He wanted to have kids. He was willing to emotionally support me. And I thought that's what I needed. And unfortunately, when you're so driven, you're willing to ignore some red flags that come up because you're like, that's not, that's not a problem. The other problem with high achieving women is we think we can solve it all. And sometimes we can't solve somebody else's problems. We just can't. And I think the biggest piece of advice I say is what you see is what you get. If you've got red flags going into a relationship, you are not going to change that. You better listen to those red flags, put Mm -hmm. up those boundaries. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I appreciate what you just, what you just provided us with. Like, It's, it literally is us recognizing like, holy shit, like we're part of this problem too. Where did you get, like, is this something that has always been like a part of you? Have you always been a high achiever? Where did you learn this from? Hmm. Like if we go back to childhood. You know, it's interesting. And I, I do a lot of coaching around this with women because it's all our family stories, right? We either yeah. are drawn to who our family was, or we completely go the opposite way. And for me, yeah. I grew up in a very, very middle-class, solid middle-class, you know, dad worked nine to five, mom only worked part-time so she could be home with me. Everybody in my family was like that. And I knew, I felt like I was different. And I knew that they, you know, they saved, but they never had more. And they never knew how to make more money because they understood this is a nine to five job. This is what I have. Anything else would have to be a gift. And even at a young age, I I knew there's got to be something else. There's got to be another way of doing this. And so I very quickly realized that is working my ass off, but not in a necessarily traditional way. As an entrepreneur, I could create my own destiny. I knew what was coming down the pike. And so that was so foreign 
to my family. They wanted to support me, but again, that's why you sometimes have to put out boundaries. Well-meaning people in your life will say, that's dangerous. That's not safe. Do you sure you really want to do that? It took me moving literally 3,000 miles away from my family to get beyond those family stories and to start surrounding myself with other people like me who were supporting me and encouraging me and saying, yeah, this is the way you can live. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so that's how I started right from the beginning was I never said, you can't do this. I always thought, why not? Yeah. And you know, I didn't have a business degree. I went to school for marketing and communications. And so I had no business background. And sometimes that's good because when you don't, when you know too much, you're going to stop yourself. When you know just enough, you're going to say, of course I can do it. Why not? I know looking for the right therapist can be challenging. However, feeling overwhelmed and disconnected is even harder. Life is filled with several twists and turns some more severe than others. We do our best to handle them as they come and find ourselves at a loss, not knowing what to do or who to turn to. The clinicians here at Outside the Norm Counseling are here to help. We are here to assist you through this time of need. Together, we will identify your strengths and goals and teach you healthy coping skills. Together, we will develop a plan to help you live the life you want to live. Our team is compassionate, genuine, and we take a great deal of pride in providing an empathetic, non-judgmental approach to all of our clients. It's time you've waited long enough, whether it be for you, your child, or if you're in need of a couple session. We are highly trained clinicians ready to guide you. Schedule an appointment now by calling 951-395-3288. Again, that number is 951-395-3288. We're looking forward to meeting you and being a part of your journey. Definitely, definitely. Um, I know, uh, you know, when you uh, when you were asking yourself, like, there's there's a difference. There's a difference inside of me. Like, I know I can do more. I know I can do, you know, X, Y, and Z. And it sounds like there was definitely this willingness, this hunger. Um, I know for me, it's like one thing that I I learned about myself was I just have to figure out the formula. Yes. I just have to figure out the formula and how to go ahead and navigate through, you know, the chaos that was happening in my household. Mm-hmm. You know, if I can just figure out the formula, if I can show up, if I can get straight A's, if I can go to college, if I can you know, achieve, then, you know, maybe that'll help my dad in his heroin addiction. If I can go ahead and figure out the formula, then maybe that'll help my mom, you know, feel more empowered so that, you know, she will eventually leave my dad. You know, we don't have to live in this chaos anymore. Yeah. We could just figure out that formula. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for you, what did that path look like in your attempt to figure out because it, I mean, obviously it leads to our demise, you know, right. us trying so desperately and being so laser focused on the, you know, the damn formula, yeah. we lose sight of everything else. Yeah. Well, you know, it started with me, Veronica, I'll never forget it. So like I said, we were middle class and we yeah. lived in a rented apartment and mm-hmm. we lived there for till I was a junior in high school. And I'll never forget coming home one day after school and my mother was sitting at the table with her head in her hands. And I was like, what is wrong? And she said, we need to move out because the landlord's letting his son move into this apartment. And I don't know what we're going to do. And I said, well, we're just going to move someplace else. She's like, but all we have in savings is $400. And at that moment, it was kind of like you. I mean, I I didn't have those issues with my family, but I said, A, I'm never going to be there. And B, Mm -hmm. I will never... Mm -hmm want again, have my mother feel this way, feel that Mm -hmm. fear, feel that lack. Mm -hmm. And it it was that driving force right from then. And it was right from then, it was that manifestation. I saw what I was going to be and who I was going to become. And it was putting myself in the right situations at the right time. I went to school in New York City. We didn't have enough money for me to live there. So I commuted because I lived outside New York City. But because of being in the right place at the right time, 
I got an internship at Good Morning America. That led to working at Good Morning America. That led to me working at CBS Sports. So I kept growing and growing. And then I realized I really need to be on the other coast. If I'm going to really do this, I need to take that step. And I, my parents couldn't help me. I mean, literally my apartment, my first apartment in Los Angeles, I had a cardboard box as a table to eat at. I was using like a tweezer as a screwdriver. Like I had no furniture whatsoever, but there was no way in hell I was not going to succeed. And to my mom's credit, you know, yep. I was 21 years old. I was a kid. And I was like, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. And my mother even said, she's like, don't you dare come back here until you try. And yeah. the, and I, I so credit her to this day saying, giving me that permission to mm-hmm. try and to succeed and to support me, even when she didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Yeah. Even with her scared. Yeah. You know, on whether or not you'd be able to to do it. Like yeah. she's st- there was still this heightened level of confidence of, you know what? I'm going to give her these words and I'm going to trust that, you know, what I have taught her is going to be enough for her to take it to that next level. That is beautiful. Yeah. That is and, so beautiful. You know, and I wasn't I wasn't afraid of hustling. I think a lot of yeah. women right now think this is my path and this is the only thing I'm going to do. Well, you know what? You may have to have mm-hmm. a side hustle for a while. You may have to mm-hmm. have two jobs. You may have to have three jobs. But if yep. you have that great and powerful why of what you want to become and what you see as your destiny, you're willing to do yeah. it. Hell Yeah. You're willing to fall on your ass, get back up, try again. Yeah. And then instead of looking at those, you know, failures as complete, you know, a, a complete form of weakness, you look at them as this form of strength and survival. And you yeah. bring your, dust yourself off and say, all right, well, I fell that time and that was pretty hard. Let's go ahead and see how many other times I'm going to fall and when I'm actually going to get to where I want to go. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I always liken it. It's funny. So I I lived in New York City and I drive in a lot and I always think of it as my parking analogy. Trying to find parking in New York City is really hard. So the first time Oh yeah. I lived there. I lived there for three and a half years. It's crazy. So the first Mm -hmm. time you go around the block, there's no parking spot. Then the next time someone got it just before you, the next Mm -hmm. time is yours. And that's what failure. You got to keep trying until it's your spot. Yep, absolutely. How would you say those lessons from growing up from your childhood have kind of molded you to um, help your clients today? Mm. Again, you know, I, I think it's more of my son dying from SIDS, having another son with intellectual disabilities, going through bankruptcy, going through a horrific divorce, of recognizing I have lived through every horrific thing most people can think of. And I lived yeah. through it and yeah. really making people understand, you know, so many times people have said, I can't imagine going through what you did. Well, neither did I, but you do mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. that's one of the biggest things when I'm helping women right now is you never know how strong you are until you don't have a choice. Like you literally, it's either you're going to decide to curl up in a ball and never get out of bed, or you're going to mm-hmm. freaking have to do it. And yep. that is is what, you know, that that grace of understanding you are of value. You are fabulous. And maybe you're not hearing it. And that's why I'm here to hold you accountable, but also hold mm-hmm. your hand. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So when you're working with your clients, do you provide them with, um, do you disclose as to like, you know, the some of the traumas that you've experienced oh, when it comes yeah. time to help them, right? Hell yeah. Um, and it's funny because the way my coaching started was I live in a very affluent town in Connecticut and everybody knows everybody. And my yeah. divorce was really ugly and really public. And uh. when that finished, I said, I was in court 28 times. It was ridiculous. And it is, I don't know if you've ever been in court, but it's toxic. It just feels horrible. It's nuts. It's yeah. horrible. And yeah, so- you feel like you're going to jail. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to jail for, but it feels like I'm going to right. jail. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And you go home and you want to just take a shower because it's just so disgusting. Yeah. And yeah. so I I didn't want another woman to have that fear and that self-doubt and that intimidation walking in. So I started with my clients taking field trips to the courthouse so that they would no understand way. how it felt and not be intimidated. And 
I got known as the the coach that worked with women in divorce. And when I would be in town at Starbucks and anybody would see me sitting with a woman, it's like, oh, she's getting a divorce. Like I literally became a divorce whisperer. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then I moved on to just, you know, helping other women just get past that self-doubt that we have. Guys don't have it like we do. And we, you know, those limiting beliefs of I'm not enough, I'm not good enough. And really explaining, I'm an open book. I am an open book because if my story could help one woman say, okay, she did it. I, she's hope to me. She's Mm -hmm. hope to me. And that's what I represent. I love that. I, I, I love, I love that sense of compassion, that sense of familiarity, um, and then your willingness to really, really go there. So if somebody's working with you, what, what are they experiencing? I mean, why did they come to me? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So it's really interesting because the two type of women I usually work with are they're going through a divorce or they are totally just dissatisfied with their job, their life. They're just feeling like it's Groundhog's Day and everything's the same. So they usually come to me for one of those two reasons. Usually the people that are not happy and dissatisfied with their life end up getting a divorce. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's usually the case. And the women who come for me for a divorce, they've got to get a job and they've been home taking care of kids, putting their life on hold for everybody else. And now it's their turn. And so those are the two type of women that come to me. Now, what's interesting is the first question I always ask anyone who comes to me, they can tell me why they're unhappy, but I always ask, how do you define happiness? Yeah. It is amazing how many they, people they can't know. define happiness. Mm-hmm. And if don't you know. don't have a specific goal, how the hell are you going to reach it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's not a dollar figure, right? No. It's not having $100,000 in the bank. What is that $100,000 going to buy you? Yeah. What is that great and powerful why? And for me, and I think for many women the first piece of that when you're going through the chaos of divorce is peace. You just want peace Mm -hmm. because that chaos, whether it is dealing with a crazy ex or dealing with a crazy client or whatever you're dealing with, who is just in your face, in your head, 24 seven is to stop the chaos. Does a lot of your work come from your experience in your divorce? Like, because like right now, as you're sharing, it sounds like you can totally relate with their pain. It's, it's this familiar, it's this sense of familiarity with, I've been there too. Here are the steps. Here's, you know, where we can go. Yeah. It really goes back to what I experienced in my divorce. And it goes back to me running the New York city marathon last year. Yeah. And that is where I, so my whole process is a four C's blueprint. For anything I do. And the first C is courage. You've got to have the courage to step out of your comfort zone. And that's hard, right? Because our ego wants us to stay in that Mm -hmm. comfort zone. It may be a miserable place to be, but it's what we know. And being uncomfortable, I liken it to, you know, you put on a blindfold, you're going to go off the diving board and you're just going to pray to God that there is water on there. But you got it, yeah. right? That courage yep. is the first thing. The next is clarity. You have to be, like I said, crystal clear about what you want. Because if you're not, how in the God are you going to achieve it? How are you going to set yep. those goals? So yep. is that clarity having your own home? Is that clarity finally opening that job and that, that company you wanted? Be really clear on what you want. The next is confidence, getting rid of that limiting belief. It's those two heads, right? That is talking to you saying, yeah, I want to do this. But that other one saying, who do you think you are to be able to do this? And and the Mm -hmm. trick is really writing down what are your greatest fears and playing that out. What do you think you can't do? And what's going to happen if you don't do it? Because when we have all of that in our head, And we don't write it down. It muddles us up going back to the clarity, right? So you have to find the confidence 
and those proof points of I am good enough. You know, when we were kids in high school, right, you may have wanted to be an artist and that one art teacher said, I don't think you're good enough. And man, that stayed with you. No matter how Mm -hmm. many times we hear we're good enough, we're great at it. It's that one person who said we're not. That was enough. Yeah. And so we really need to write down all of those proof points that we are good enough to build up that confidence. And the last is consistency. Man, when I was training, right? I mean, there were days I woke up and I didn't want to run. And everybody yeah. said when I started out, because mind you, I had never run in my life. I went from one mile to 26 miles in a year. And the great and powerful why for me was it was my 25th, the 25th anniversary of my son dying. And yeah. I was running in his memory. And so yeah. every morning when I woke up, I said, today I'm going to do a mile. The next day I'm going to do a mile and a half. And I, I congratulated myself for those small steps because when we have that giant goal and we don't have those small steps, it's easy to get discouraged on that rainy day when we don't want to go out and run or when we don't want to get out of bed because we're just tired because we were up late the night before. It's those small, consistent steps and congratulating yourself for those small and mm-hmm. consistent steps that keep us going. And yeah, we're going to have setbacks. It's okay. Just keep going. My daughter is an exercise science major and she's like, do one push up. One push up is better than none. Just Mm -hmm. have that consistency to keep going because you are going to survive. You are going to succeed at your goals. It's kind of like, you know, the GPS analogy. You put in where you want to go in the GPS, but the GPS isn't going to know if you're, you get a flat tire. The GPS Mm -hmm. isn't going to know if you get in a fender bender, but you're not going to stop. The GPS is going to still keep giving you directions to your location. You just got to get past those little detours that keep on coming up and you're going to get there. I love it. Hell yeah. Absolutely. What would you say holds us back the most? Mm. For women, it is those, those stories, those stories in our head of, I'm too Mm -hmm. old. I'm too fat. I'm not attractive enough. I'm not smart enough. One of the worst words in the English language is but, right? I'm going to do this, but the Mm -hmm. minute that but comes out of your mouth, you know, you've already given up. You already know you're going to cop out. And so those old stories, and that's why it's so important to put up those boundaries. Like I said, my family was so well-meaning, but none of them had ever been an entrepreneur. They were scared to death for me, well-meaning, right? And so when I have a client who says to me, I talk to my sister and she thinks it's a horrible idea to open my own business. And I'm like, but does your sister own a business? Why would you be asking advice from someone who's never been in your shoes before? Mm-hmm. Or if it's someone, same thing with my my divorce. My family was supportive, but they had never, there had never been a divorce in my family. They didn't have a yeah. clue what advice to give me. So I needed to start talking to people who were where I wanted to be and who could give me that advice. So when you have people in your life who are not supporting you and are not in the place you want to be, you got to put up those boundaries. And that's how you're going to get past those stories of not being good enough. I have a Facebook group, Midlife Mavericks. We support each other. We are there for each other. That is what I tell my clients. You may give up on yourself. I am never going to give up on you Mm -hmm. because I know you are capable I know Mm -hmm. you can succeed and I'm going to be that person there, not just saying yes to you. Yeah, I'm going to give you pushback, but it's going to be constructive in a manner that's going to support you to achieve your goals. I love it. For those that want to work with you, how do we find you? So I have a freebie for anybody that's in your audience, five steps to release fear and live boldly. And you can find that on allison-jacobson.com and it's up there. I have 90 minute kind of kickstart one-to-one coaching sessions and that's on there as well. And just for a great read on Amazon is my book, Daily Inspirations for Midlife Women, A Guide to Peace, Joy, Confidence, and Abundance. It's that little motivation every morning for you and that's on Amazon. 
Yay. How do we find you on social media? On social media, on Instagram, I'm underscore Allison Jacobson. Online, I'm allison-jacobson.com. On Facebook, I'm Midlife Maven. Yay. We are going to have all of this information. So her contact information, the links for her freebies, all of this will be in our show notes. Allison, thank you so much for coming on. I love like just how motivated you are, how uplifting you are. And I mean, just to hear like, it's not, it's, it's not the end until you call it and you say it's the end. I love that. Absolutely. You can do anything you put your mind to. Thank you, Allison, for coming on. Thanks, Veronica. Raise your hand if you are ready to level up your marriage for 2023. Do you find that you're spending your time together with your husband, checked out, and in front of the TV? I know you're ready for tangible strategies that actually get you results. Reignite the spark in your marriage, have fun, and grow together. Well, I hope you have your hand raised at this minute because I have something special for you. I'm introducing my brand new six question marriage predictor quiz that's going to give you personalized results to catapult you into the next stage of your marriage journey. That means you'll receive the results to where your marriage can get the best help. If you've got just one minute, head to veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. Again, that's veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. And you could take my brand new quiz, Marriage Predictor. Get your results delivered right to your email address. Again, that's veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today.